It goes back to 1982-83, back to the time when I was lying about my scores. I was not the only guy lying about scores. The famous Life magazine uh, photo shoot has, I've never tried to count them up, but three, four, five, six guys that lied about their scores. And so Twin Galaxies early on recognized that there is a big problem with guys trying to lie and cheat their way in to the record books. Video games, classic arcade gaming, sort of then died for 15 years and was resurrected in the internet uh, advent of the emulators, MAME and Retrocade and some of those. And almost immediately, people started to, again, lie and cheat their way into the record books, or, or attempt to at least, and Twin Galaxies had to put the clamps on that. Um, and they did several things in the emulator world to stop lying and cheating, and, but then ab about that same time, all of a sudden, here's a guy making a claim about Donkey Kong, a game that nobody had ever come close to Billy on back in the 80s. So immediately, not just Billy, but all of Twin Galaxies were suspicious. Wait a second, is somebody really as good as Billy? Nobody ever was before. That sounds really odd. And with all the cheating that had gone on 20 years before, and now again with MAME, the first thought was, let's verify. Let's go find out, is this really true? Was there a double standard? You bet. Twin Galaxies knew who Billy Mitchell was. If Billy Mitchell called me up today and said, Steve, I just scored 1.2 million on Kong, I wouldn't say, I doubt that, prove it. I'd say, Billy, I know you, I believe it. Uh, he, he was absolutely trustworthy. Steve Levy was an unknown guy. Are we going to put him to a, so, so to speak, higher standard? Yeah, until we know him and trust him, that's what we're going to do. It has been difficult for me throughout the entire process of uh, the events before the movie and the, and the events that the movie depicts about how Twin Galaxies has handled Steve Weeby because on the one hand, I'm Billy's best friend. I'm so loyal to him. And on the other hand, uh, if somebody can beat Billy at Donkey Kong, you know, terrific. I just want to see what the truth is. So when Twin Galaxies began to really uh, put a lot of pressure on Steve Weeby to, to prove himself and, and were doubting him and, and raising all kinds of, of uh, theories and points about why he might be cheating and how he might be cheating, I have to admit I was very skeptical. skeptical. And the reason I was skeptical was some of the things they were saying about a gummy substance on one of the chips, I thought that was ludicrous. So I tried to walk the line between being loyal to my friends, but also just looking at the world the way that it really is. What's really happening here? And it, it's still difficult for me to this day. The movie kind of shows that. Um, after the movie, uh, Billy is not kept any secrets about the fact that he's been upset about the way he's been portrayed. And so it's difficult for me right now. I mean, here I am having this interview, and, and Billy's not here beside me the way he was throughout the movie. I wish Billy were here. Um, that's, that's hard for me. I, I actually thought about having no further contact uh, with the makers of this movie just for Billy's sake. But I finally decided if I can just get the truth out, if I can tell the whole story, that actually is the way that I think I can be most loyal to Billy and align myself with reality and the truth. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we talked specifically about the Fun Spot videotape submission, and when I told him that that was sort of a, a kind of a turning point in the movie that, to show how Billy had always been a live player, now he's this videotape guy, um, two things he said. One was he regretted having done it that way. Um, I came up with sort of the analogy, of, it'd be like if Tiger Woods couldn't make it to Augusta one year, he sends in a videotape of himself shooting 59 at Augusta. You know, that wouldn't achieve anything except making Tiger look like a jerk, and Tiger would never do that. Billy, when I said that, Billy recognized that it made himself look bad, and he wished that he hadn't done it. Um, but then he also made a comment to me that I, have to, I agree with completely, and that is, it's a shame that... I'm going to be remembered for a long time for that one event in my life when there are so many other things that I have done that are so good and so positive, but no one's going to know that. Well, for example, he's always been the kind of guy who thinks about 
um, the down and outers, the, the needy. He's a very loving, giving kind of person. Um, the Make-A-Wish Foundation has been his big charity for years and years. Recently there was a, uh, a young boy in Florida that had uh, debilitating cancer. In fact, if that child is not dead right now, I'm certain he's very close to death. And that child, like many, loved video games. And uh, when the Make-A-Wish Foundation contacted this child and said, what can we do to fulfill your wish, he wanted to get a Wii, an Xbox, and a PS3, and he wanted to meet Billy Mitchell. And uh, Make-A-Wish was already in contact with Billy anyway because of his years of, of working with them. And they said, Billy, will you come uh, to this child's home and spend a day with him and show him video games? And he said, of course, I'd be happy to be there.